Kia ora and welcome. Welcome to this podcast. Welcome to all of those of you who have listened to one already. Welcome to my clients. Welcome to my whanau. And welcome to all of those dialing in for the first time. Hopefully there's a few of you, not just in New Zealand, but around the world listening in. And I'm equally going to try and make it relevant to you. No doubt if you've seen the title of this podcast, Conscious Fishing, and this podcast as a whole is the provider podcast, you've probably got some sort of interest in fishing in the ocean, maybe in gathering and eating your own food and staying healthy. So that's ultimately what this podcast is all about. I am an outdoors guide. I've taken people fishing for the last 20 years. I am also a certified health coach of four years. And I sit beside people who need a bit of a helping hand to heal their mind, body or soul. And I run men's wellbeing retreats in Tairua on the Coromandel Peninsula in New Zealand. So this podcast that I'm going to talk about today is called Conscious Fishing. And it's something that has been rolling around in my head while I'm out in the garden or on the boat and what I'm going to talk about for a good year I reckon and I guess what's prompted me to finally record it today is some of the announcements that came out this week about the Hauraki Gulf and sea change and blah 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 bureaucratic rubbish so I wanted to take things right back to grassroots when I'm talking about conscious fishing. So I'm going to kick the podcast off by honouring the land that we stand on, the ocean that we get our kai, moana and nutrition from, I'd like to start by honouring all of those that came before us on this land, the original peoples of this land. I'd like to honour all four directions. And I'd specifically like to honour the people that connected me with the ocean. My dad, who took me fishing from a young age. My granddad and grandma, who took me fishing from a young age. And all of those three also put, planted this little seed with me about being out there on the ocean, gathering your food, looking after the ocean, and giving it the full respect of cooking it well to nourish your body and your mind and your soul. So big mihi to my ancestors for that and I'm going to delve into some of that today so looking at some of the media around some of the announcements in New Zealand this week about the Hauraki Gulf uh, and some of the dialogue around it in social media and in the news it's highlighted, highlighted something that I've felt for a long time, is that the general non-fishing public have very little idea about the ocean, very little idea about our connection to the ocean, and very little idea about where good food and nutrition comes from. So before we delve into some, uh, I guess, theoretical conversations about fishing. I want to delve into the word conscious. And what does being conscious mean? So conscious, if you look at the definition of conscious, it means being aware of and responding to one's surroundings. If 
you want to take that further, which I do want to take it further. Being conscious means being aware of your surroundings and also being aware of yourself and your own, I think, inner wisdom, inner powers, everything that you were born here to do. Being conscious means being aware of your connection to everything in the universe, ultimately. I think that's what being conscious means. You've only got to look at, um, while you're out there fishing or in the water with a spear gun or when you're in the water diving or even observing your pets as they wander around your land or your house. How do they know to do these things? It's because they're connected to nature. They're connected to the consciousness of nature. So like when my when my cat had babies, I sat there for a whole day watching my pregnant cat birth these two kittens and just an amazement, like, how does she know to do this? how she just tended to them so well and went through all these stages of licking them and comforting them and protecting them and she's born with that inside her so you look at how a kingfish hunts hunts mackerel and piper and how does it know how to do this it's born with it's not only born with it it's passed down through its genetic material but is also tapped into a universal intelligence. So it's got it inside it. It's also tapped into it outside it. So I'm going to define conscious as, as being dialed into the intelligence of nature, your ancestors that came before you, and your inner power and knowledge. And it's all interrelated. Ultimately, being conscious means you know how nature works and how you work. And again, I'll take it back to these announcements this week. How well do the bureaucrats in Wellington, the public servants at the Department of Conservation, the Ministry of the Environment, the Ministry of Primary Industries, our politicians, National, Green, Labour, all these suit-wearing people, how connected to the land and ocean are they? That's my question. But I'm going to kick off into this podcast. Really, it's about exploring what we do as fishermen. And as most of you will know, I've had a pretty extensive career in fishing of ups and downs. Uh, it's been an amazing, amazing journey. I'll talk about some of this as we go through. Um, and there's going to be some things I challenge you as fishermen here that I've ultimately challenged myself about. So um, if I say something, it doesn't come from a place of judgment as fishermen. We're all on our own learning journey. Uh, but I wanted to share some wisdom, some things I've learned along the way. And, you know, you might say, well, you did this 10 years ago, Carl, or 20 years ago. Well, we're all here as human beings to grow. And as we grow, it's our responsibility to share some of that wisdom as well. And the world would be a pretty ordinary place if we're all doing the same thing we're doing 20 years ago. Our whole reason we're here on this planet is to learn, to love each other, to uh, dial into nature and how awesome and beautiful it is observe it, feel it, relish in it. I think fishing is something that ultimately uh, enables us to do that because we're out in nature. One of the things I'm going to touch on in this podcast is the concept of regeneration. And... You know, the, the egg again, I'm going to take, take it back to a, a, a definition of a word. So 
generation ultimately means a, a kind of life, like a, a, a race, a people, uh, a, a genetic species, genetic material. And regeneration means that's reborn. And this is what nature does. If you're out on the ocean, you see it all the time. Especially when you're diving, you see all these, the next generation of crayfish and the next generation of mackerel and trevally coming through all the time. And this is what nature does. Nature moves towards life. And it's what our bodies do. Like if we get a, get a cut, like I was out diving the other day, I don't know which side that's on, but yeah, this over here scratch my head up against a rock and it was bleeding the other night but it's already healing up it's what our bodies do they move towards healing and towards life this is ultimately the truth you look at any religion any spiritual leader like jesus it's what they were trying to tell us they were they were trying to tell us uh that our power is in us it's not at a, not from the leader of a church it's not from a priest it's not from a politician our power comes from us. We're part of nature. We regenerate. We heal ourselves. Fishing, I think, is a big part of healing. So I challenge you as fishermen to strip away some things that don't serve you. Sort of the path I've been going down for a long time, the last 10 years, I guess, because I went down a path that uh, burnt me out and really didn't sit well with my values. And I, I've had to sit back and look at it. And that's really where Provider was born. Providers, provider is really about um, this concept that nature provides everything that we need, our medicine, our nutrition, our energy, our healing powers. And that we're connected to all of that. Uh, so what are we what are we going to talk about? I guess guess from the start, it's like, why do you go fishing? And I'll pause it there because that's a question to think about yourself. Why do you go fishing? There's probably multiple reasons. Ultimately, for me, it's where I get um, it's where I get a recharge and a refresh. It's where I feel connected to people that aren't with me anymore. So, like my dad, like my grandparents. It's where you can strip away all the stuff, computers and cell phones, and just be out in nature. To me, it is about, ultimately, I'm going out there to refresh and recharge, be connected to nature, but I'm also there to get some nourishment, some kaimoana to bring home. Ultimately, for the next 24, 48, 72 hours, if I'm lucky, maybe be able to share it around my community. And... That organic fresh kai is what keeps you well. The more you can eat direct from nature without adding in other things and other processes and companies and governments, and that's where well-being comes from. You look at any disease, cancer, diabetes, any sort of inflammatory disease, and they're rife in New Zealand, respiratory disease, asthma. Ultimately, it comes from man-made interference. And by man-made interference, I mean introduce chemicals that aren't in balance, Glyphosate is a good example of that. Out of fishing, I also get a connection to other people uh, if I take them along. So I do a lot of fishing just out on my own 
and I find it very th therapeutic and I can just sort of go with my own flow and follow it. But fishing, if you're doing it with mates, gives you a sense of connection. That's an important part of mental well-being as well. I really like as a guide taking people fishing because I get to understand how other people work and what's going on in their lives. And I I, I am very blessed to have a, an amazing clientele, both as a fishing guide and as a coach. Some very clever people, people that have done amazing things in their lives and I always get a buzz out of hearing about their lives, what makes them tick, their aspirations, and um, everyone brings some wisdom to the table. And that's what being human is all about as well. So what other reasons do you go fishing? Maybe drop some comments in the comments section. So I, I might just talk about a typical day fishing for me and some things that I do to stay conscious. I guess I always go out fishing with a little bit of an objective of what I'm there to do and what I might like to see on the table, but I'll always be open to going with what nature provides and uh, observing out there. And my my plans can change. So I'll go prepared for a, a few scenarios. Sometimes I'm pretty dialed in and what I wanted to do, whether it's getting a crow for dinner or catching a kingfish for, a, you know, if I've got some whanau coming around for dinner. It's also good to get your boat prepared so that you've got all the things on board to do justice to your catch. And specifically, I'm talking about having enough ice, especially in summer, to keep your fish in tip-top condition. Taking things like refillable water bottles up so you don't have to stop at the bakery, for example, and buy plastic water in the morning. I try and have a, like, a have got a massive refillable icy tech water bottle that I take out on the water. Just these little things. What are you going to do to do for your own sustenance and energy while you're out there? I don't eat much on land through the day. I tend to have a big dinner at night and I'll just snack it in the forest during the day. So, But at, at sea, I need to eat a lot. That movement does something to my stomach where I'm like, I eat a lot on the ocean, especially if I'm diving. I'll eat before and after my dive. Uh, and I, one thing that has frustrated me as a guide over the years, if I'm letting my clients bring their own kai, is there's all sorts of crap that comes. And I'm like, you're here to catch all this beautiful kai moana, and then you jump on with a V or a Red Bull or a packet of twisties or all this sugar-laced rubbish. And to me, that's the antithesis of fishing. Fishing's all about going and catching food straight from nature to fuel your body for your immunity, for cell regeneration. One thing I do these days is cook a big feed the night before and take leftovers out for the next day. That's pretty much my staple food on the ocean. Have a big kai the night before, have enough kai from the night before to take on the ocean. It's a great routine to get into. And you can take it out in refillable containers so there's no rubbish. All these little things we can do as fishermen. And some some of you might not have thought about them before. But uh, I think it's our responsibility as fishermen. When we're going out fishing, how are we going to reduce the amount of shit we don't need, reduce the amount of rubbish we bring back at the end of the day, Reduce the amount of rubbish that might fly overboard during the day. So another thing I think you can do to prepare for that is uh, catch your own bait. Make sure you freeze any uh, excess kawaii or mackies. Use that as bait. Don't go and buy plastic wrap bait. It's usually rubbish anyway. You've got access out there while you're fishing to 
catch so much bait. Kawaii, Piper, Mackies. It's all there. Skippies in summer, skipjack tuna. As fishermen, I think the best thing we can do is uh, just work towards becoming self-sufficient, self-reliant. Even um, I do take, because I, I charge a fee for my service, I do take, you know, heaps of salt ice and bags. But, you know, a lot of the times I'm thinking there's got to be a way to do this better. If you've got some ways to do it better, yell out. I mean, even freezing blocks of salt water could be a solution. If you've got something you do, drop it in the comments. I'll be keen to hear from you. So next one. I guess when do I go fishing? <laughs> this is this is a this is a big one, I reckon. Cause you know, when there's a bite on, there's always this temptation to be out there every day of the bite. But these days I'm like, if I've been out and got a fish and I've got a lot of food in the fridge. I'll probably just stay at home if I don't have a charter and I'll be in the garden. <laughs> like there seems to be this relentless need to be out there catching fish and putting it on social media and doing this and doing that. Do you really need to go fishing sometimes? That's pretty much the starting point for me. Do I need to be out there fishing? I love my fishing. It's what I'd love to do every day. And I've done it in the past where I'm like, oh, I know the fish are on. But I've got fish in the fridge and I still go out. Do I really need to? Probably something that I've stepped back from being in that need to just go out there for fishing's sake. Sometimes with things like the bluefin, I'm just waiting and letting them come to me as well. You know, I've seen them at Waiho. As you get older and wiser, you're like, I just let them come to me. Don't need to go to them. And sure enough, had some pretty awesome trips this year, letting them just come to me. And I know there's another wave about to come as well. Looking forward to that. As good as it looked at Waiho last week, it looked pretty cool. But, you know, again, I'd say to all those people who caught a few and then decided to catch and release 20 more, you really need to. couple of our trips we like went out got them and I said to the boys right we've got tuna each on ice let's go home and I'll show you how to treat it with respect and let's chop it up in a way that uh, is going to be awesome for your car and I'll tell you all about the tuna and get home early and be refreshed don't need to stay out till dark catching and releasing one tuna after the other if you look at what fish do right fish and birds are a classic example of this. Gannets. Shags. They eat and hunt when they need to. What do they do once they've got enough? They stop. They rest. They get their energy back. If you look into nature, it is all about energy in, energy out. So if a gannet's flown 70 miles from White Island to get to Tairoa, to hunt Mackies and he's had a scoff, probably going to have a rest before he flies back again. There's all these lessons in nature that uh, that I see all the time when you stop and watch it, you know. When you're out game fishing, all the shearwaters, they're not always flying around looking for food. When the bite's on, they're there. When they're not, they rest. And it's sort of what I do these days as well, you know. Take the time while you're out there to really appreciate the beauty. Be there for the bite. Go and have a chill out in the bay somewhere. Have a feed. Really let nature rejuvenate you while you're out there because that's really what you're there for. Over the years, being out on the water from dawn till dusk, it's amazing just seeing how the sun transits through the sky, how the sun rises in a different spot on the horizon, completely different spot each day, so days get shorter and longer. 
These are all things that I try and point out to other people as a guide. And a lot of people have no idea until they actually see it and they're like, wow. Yeah, so now I get winter and summer. The tides. Even putting the boat in in the morning and people will be like, uh, so is the tide coming in or out? And I'll be like, well, have a look at what way the boats are hanging in the harbour. These simple things. I think a lot of us people that are fishermen take for granted and do, but your common person that comes on a charter, for example, like, oh, well, this is the consciousness of fishing. And we plan our fishing trips a lot of the times around what's a good moon phase. You know, a lot of fish have a different moon phase that's good for fishing. Harpuka, for example, quite good. You know, they come in from the deep onto the reefs around the full moon. I plan if I'm just game fishing for my whanau and I don't want to spend an arm and a leg on petrol, I'll you know, get a good idea of where the bite is and aim to be out around those spots. I'll find some bait and make sure I'm there at the high tide or the low tide. And that's worked very well the last few years. You know, I haven't done a lot of hours game fishing, but I've uh, got, some, got some very nice fish and, um, you know, and uh, done pretty well. I think um, observation is, is key. And just really being there to smell the flowers. I, I remember a trip I did out of... Uh, Fitty Angle one day, I was just helping some other guys out and taking an extra four guys on a trip that some other boats had organised. And I don't really do that too much these days because I prefer to work with my own clients for this reason. But uh, So I can set my own expectations of what we're going to do on the day. But they're like, oh, Carl, do you think we're going to get a 20 kilo kingfish today? You know, how many kingfish do you reckon we're going to get today? And I was, I was like, guys, I sort of think you're missing the point here you know we'll get what nature provides to us and then we're catching bait and they kept asking do you think we're gonna need 20 kilo kingy today and i was watching all this mist come off the beach at buffalo beach and out over fari kaho over like this amazing historical site that i was trying to impart some of the stories of the past and these guys were just that focused on what they may or may not catch that day, and they miss just this completely magical moment. It's one of those things I distinctly remember, just that atmosphere that, and the energy that day was just incredible. And it's those moments and just seeing nature and its glory that it's one of the reasons I go fishing. Uh, this time of the day, you know, first thing in the morning while you're out, just first of all reading the water, looking for the current lines, especially when you get out game fishing. That's all the stuff I love, reading where the water's, where the good water's coming from, looking for the current lines when you first come out of the harbour and the turns and where the bait's going to be. This is all part of the consciousness of fishing as well. So going out fishing, paying your respects to the ocean, to those that came before you, saying a little prayer. Something that I've always done internally. These days, more and more, I'm sort of doing it externally and uh, verbalizing it so that my clients know what I'm doing as well, impart some of this knowledge. Really important to ask for safety when you go out. Every time I roll off the back of the boat for a dive, I've always got a little ritual that I do. Thank Tangaroa, ask for his blessing. Thank my dad, who showed me how to catch crayfish. Ask for some abundance and ask for safety. As you're going out, you know, if you're going out in the morning, you can connect with uh, some stars like we've got. Mudariki in the dawn sky in the morning, Orion, Sirius, Canopus, you got the planets, you got the moon. Connect with these celestial objects, give thanks. You might be amazed at what blessings come your way. I think these are all important things we should be doing as fishermen.
as I'm heading out fishing. Really important to observe. And this is what being conscious is all about. It's something that you've got to do as a charter skipper because you're there for the safety of your clients. And so being conscious is being aware of what's going around on your boat as well. Is there a bit of water coming in somewhere? Is the ladder up? Is the aerial up? Start to listen into the chit chat on the radio. Start to watch what the gannets are doing. What are the turns doing? What are the shags doing? This is all a part of this consciousness of fishing. Any hunter knows it, any good fisherman knows it. Fishing is all about consciousness, being connected, observing. And what I've talked about before, being prepared. And it's not just getting your tackle prepared, it's all these other things, all these other things that we do before we get our boat ready. There's this old saying, which is fish your feet first. And it's such an important saying, like uh, so many times you'll get everything you need pretty close. And these days, you know, if you've got it close, do you really need to bowl out wide then? Uh, I used to do a lot of, you know, offshore deep drop stuff back in the day. I do less and less all the time because I'm like, man, I'm getting, getting what I need pretty close to home. I will do. I love my deep drops and I'll do that from time to time. You know, get myself a feed of blue nose or pucker or but I do it less and less these days. Uh petrol's exorbitantly expensive. And unless I've got someone who really wants to do it and I've got a good crew together to fund it, I I probably don't do it really for myself anymore. You might ask why am I talking about all of these things? Well, if you hadn't noticed, planet's in a bit of strife. Whether you believe in the idea of climate change or not is irrelevant. If you look at nature, there's some shit going down. And if you look at humanity, there's some shit going down. And, you know, our planet goes through these cycles of warming and cooling. And there's, without doubt, we're going through those cycles at the moment. We may have escalated some of that. But there's all sorts of other things. You know, soil quality is nothing like it used to be. And I'll dovetail into there is what do you do with every little bit of nutrition that you get out of a fish you catch? These days I got nothing at sea. I'll bring it back and uh, regenerate my soil. So there is a cycle that's going on with my fishing. It's between my fishing and my garden. The gut's going in the garden. Everything I wash off my fillet bench, it doesn't go down a drain, it goes onto my land. Even when I'm washing my pot out, my fry pan, when I'm cooking my fish, I don't tip anything down my sink. It gets washed out and it goes next to a plant, a lime tree, apple tree, pear tree, my kawakawa. I need to get a bit cleverer about uh, using what we're given, going back to the old ways like that. Don't give all that goodness to the council down their drains. <laughs> it's actually good for your plants and your soil. So, catching fish. You're in a good bite. And I'll preface this by saying I've caught and released my fair share of kingfish over time. Would I go out and spend the whole day catching and releasing kingfish anymore? 100% no. I've got a charter and it's kingy charter i will you know I'll make sure everyone gets their arms stretched i'll find everyone a kingfish we might even release one or two but i'm not going to spend the whole day catching and releasing kingfish anymore doesn't sit well with me i have a connection to those kingfish and i see them come aboard and i always pay my respects to them touch them on the head down their lateral line say thank you uh, I don't like playing with playing with fish anymore. I like eating them. I like I, I do like the battle and the hunt. Uh, but I'm I I don't necessarily agree with catch and release anymore. I know that's not going to sit well with some of you listening in. 
I don't agree with tournaments that are just catch and release Marlin tournaments. I, I'll go hunt Marlin for Kai, 100%. It's good tucker, good tucker smoke. But uh, what's the point of wasting thousands of dollars in diesels just to tag and release a Marlin? I, I literally don't know anymore. Been there, done that. Been to Ken's, spent a whole week catching and releasing Blake Marlin. Would I go and do it again? Nah. It was fun at the time. An awesome experience. But yeah, probably wouldn't do it again. And again, this is just my truth. What sits well with you might be completely different. But I might plant a few seeds in this podcast that you might be listening to and taking in. When I go back and talk about the health of the planet at the moment, it's not just the health of the plants and the soil and the ocean. It's us. You see it nearly every day in the news. There's a health crisis in New Zealand. We're sick. Stroke. Diabetes. Heart disease. Cancer. Respiratory disease. Asthma. Could go on. These diseases are a reflection of what's happening in nature and our separation from nature. Once we come back to nature, they go away. What's the opposite of disease? It's ease. It's doing things easily. How nature intended. So I guess on the note of um, you know, once you got your Kai moving on, probably wanted to talk about this whole concept of sport fishing. You know, we've got a New Zealand Sport Fishing Council that heads up all the clubs around New Zealand. I was a little bit involved, like as a kid, not really. Did fish the odd competition with uh, my family probably got sucked more and more into it as uh, I moved back to the Coromandel and then started charter business and do like the camaraderie that clubs bring uh, shared love of fishing shared love of the outdoors and I've participated in my fair few of competitions you know of uh been to club prize givings and got cubs for heaviest kingfish and heaviest marlin and most points in the nationals, bloody blah, blah. But it's something I've pulled back from in the last three or four years and really taken a good look at. Like, um, again, if I put it on that list of why do I go fishing, getting a trophy or a pin or a name in a yearbook means fucking nothing to me anymore. Um, and given all these other things I've talked about, the health of the planet, uh, all the stuff that bureaucracy are trying to push push on us. We need to be role models as fishermen for looking after the ocean. And um, sport fishing, even just the title sport fishing, I don't think it sits well with bureaucrats. So as an industry, we really need to take a good look at that. You know, most people going out doing comps, etc., they are using the food for kai, feeding their families but there's all this other palaver around wrapped around it that really doesn't serve us anymore i'd like you to take a think about that again not judging you if you want to go do it i've done it before but uh i think we need to take a really good look at how our clubs are modeled it should be about getting together for kai our shared love of fishing i don't really see how this igfa model which came out of america ultimately if it serves us anymore going and try and catching a 20 kilo kingfish on 4kg line the sport of it the amount of times you might get busted off and leave hooks in a fish or nylon on the end of a bottom of an ocean i don't think it sits well with uh what we know as human beings now you know we've got to look after the planet Even, you know, Bluefin, every club now seems to have a 
bluefin comp, which incentivize people. They might have got a 30 or 40 kilo fish and they've got fish in the freezer. But there's this relentless desire to go and get the biggest one and get the, the biggest one, a 90 kilo, a 100 kilo, 110 kilo, 120 kilo. For what? Just uh, the glory of it? I used to fish the nationals. It was a great tradition to catch up with my mates and... I'd still do that at that time of year, give my good mates a call and go, let's go for a fish. Would I sign up for the Nationals again? No. 100% no. I don't see why. I, you know, there's there's some things that always really didn't sit well with me. Eight days straight's a fucking long time and you're really fucked at the end of it. Um, that was fun at the time caught a lot of fish but some of that came from a place of ego and not not here yeah interesting looking back at all that um, if you want to go and do it next year sweet have a good time you probably need a break if you've been working hard all year and it it is a bloody good break from normal life. And being out there in that blue water that time of year is just absolutely awesome. And hopefully you have a good feed and you bring some kai home. But uh, am I going to be doing it ever again? No. Maybe if it's rejig, yeah. Maybe if they take the light line out, possibly. You look at the financial model of most fishing clubs around New Zealand, they're all fueled pretty much by alcohol sales. I know because I've been on the committee of one. Um and that's where most of the revenue comes from. And I don't necessarily know in this day and age if that's a good thing. I, you know, I, that's one of the reasons I moved away from Fishing Club. If, if I was doing, you know, talking about well-being and running men's retreats, which include no alcohol, didn't really sit well with me to be on the committee of a club that basically it's actually a drinking culture. Um and, you know, it's not just fishing, it's most other clubs around, rugby clubs, etc. And we need to take a look as a country, I think, at that. You know, what's the point of going and catching all this amazing fish and uh, you're ruining it by smashing a box of beers or a bottle of rum? Fishing, to me, is about nutrition and well-being at the end of the day. Uh, you know, if you take a drive down the Thames coast, look at all the people fishing off the rocks, putting their little tinnies in. Most of these guys don't belong to clubs. We need to reassess. I, I know the Sport Fishing Council does a good job of advocacy, uh, but the rest of New Zealand needs to step up, I think, and um, the rest of fishermen need to step up and try and start to take their power back. Uh, it's not just recreational fishing. Most people that go fishing in New Zealand fish for a feed. Um, and so these things, and a lot of things I'm talking about, I'm really talking about because I have been part of the I guess the sport fishing scene before and I do have people that are going to be listening to this that are part of this you know fishing culture but I, I think you know a lot of the things that I'm talking about in this podcast is really about going back to basics like the <laughs> the people out there fishing in the snap in the sna snapper the muscle farms for snapper and out there fishing for a feed this is what fishing is about to me these days ultimately still like catching some big fish and uh, having my arms pulled off uh, in the challenge and the hunt and making sure my gear's up to task I think it's important so that you know you don't you're not losing gear uh, but fishing to me ultimately comes back to our connection to the ocean to nature to our bodies and our families and uh fueling our family's well-being we need to come together as a country i think and take a look at subsistence fishing recreational fishing or sport fishing is really not a term that really fits the culture of the custom of going and catching a feed of fish and unfortunately now you know we see the department of department of conservation trying to draw lines in the ocean, places like the Ottomans, and uh, tell us we can't fish there. It really doesn't sit well with me at all. Uh, and it doesn't sit well with me even on the customary side, having to 
have a slip of slip of paper that someone signs that says you can go fishing there. That is not us being in nature, and it's not custom. It's not customary. Customary is being a part of nature, being connected to nature, not signing a piece of paper that ultimately links you back to the crown, back to the company. That is not fishing. Fishing is being free, being free to catch your own wild kai. We need to get our act together in a hurry and come together because we're getting things forced down from the top, not healing the ocean and the planet from the ground up, which is where any regeneration comes from, from communities, from the ground up, not by idiots in Wellington drawing lines in the ocean. There's a lot of things I'm thinking about that I haven't executed as yet. One is, um, you know, I look at sinkers, lead, jigs, lead. Lead's to toxic substance. Should we be putting lead into the ocean? Don't know if you've got any ways around this. Drop them in the comments. Soft plastics. Used to do a lot of it. Don't necessarily do it anymore. If you've got any thoughts about this, drop it in the comments. I wanted to talk a bit about a uh, few things regarding using your fish. So one of those is if you're going to go fishing, I think it's important to go out there with the idea that you're going to use the whole fish. Uh, I've sort of had enough of coming home, chopping a fish up, going to put a fish head into a chili bin and people going, oh, no, I don't really want that. Uh, like The head is the most nutritious part of the fish. If you're going to go fishing and eat fish, learn how to use it. It's actually the tastiest as well. Seriously. I, you know, as much as I think Kayaka Legacy are doing a great job. Incentivizing people to catch more fish so they can give their fish heads away. Again, it doesn't sit well with me. If you're going to go fishing, use your fish heads. Use them first. Fish fillets last for ages and they store very well. Fish heads, they've got a high fat content, and it's one of the first meals you should prepare. First night, second night, there's heaps of ways you can do it without this idea that that stinks a house out. They don't. You do it properly, roast them, all the meat just falls off the bone after 15 to 20 minutes, and usually, like a kingfish head, there's so much in there, and it is the tastiest part of the fish. Learn how to use the frame, especially the wings. You know, the wings next to the head are just like the, oh, such the best part of the fish. Uh, if you want more information on this, I've got heaps of recipes and videos on my website, my YouTube channel, my Instagram, my Facebook. Just keep following and keep learning. Put a challenge out to you. If you don't use the head or wings at the moment, start using them. Sign up on, on one of my retreats. I'll show you so many ways you can use them. Take only enough that you need for a feed. You know, as, as you go and if you're in a good bite, that dopamine hit and adrenaline is kicking in. You're like, whoa, this is so cool. Oh, have, have I got enough? Have I got enough? One kingfish is enough. One kingfish is more than enough for one person to take home and share with their family. There's so much meat off it. Conscious fishing, I think as well, means paying full respect to the fish by matching it up with other good organic kai as well. And, you know, we our fish that we catch in New Zealand deserves more than putting in a bear bat on with some chips, you know. Uh, Actually, you've got this amazing protein and fat and omega-3s. This organic wild kai, match it up with the other organic kai, heaps of good plants, and really make the nutritional benefits sing on the plate. So, so you're really consciously creating this amazing piece of art and tribute to the fish that you've caught. I think we deserve, you know, the fish deserve that justice, and so do our bodies. This is what 
I'm sort of talking about with this idea of conscious fishing. Other cultures around the world do it. They create these amazing pieces of art with their food that really pays full respect and gives the fish a tribute. And I think that's how we ultimately up our game at the end of a fishing trip. Uh, but I think ultimately we've got to clean our own game up a little bit. Or we're going to be forced more and more into these retarded schemes that bureaucrats are coming up with. Like anyone sitting in Wellington coming up with rules about where they're going to section off places at the orders. They've got no idea about what goes on on the water. Like uh, literally, team, you're not going to be able to catch skipjack tuna, marlin, all the kingfish, all these pelagic species that come and go. There's huge areas at the Aldermans at Department of Conservation, Ministry of the Environment, MPI are about to put through legislation and lock up. And it makes zero sense. We can sit here and criticise, but what have you done to clean up your own backyard? What have you done to change the way you fish as well? And I've put a challenge out there to the New Zealand Sport Fishing Council. What are we doing to distance ourselves from all this IGFA line class competition? I actually say nonsense. It's not why we go fishing. There's this gaping hole between recreational fishing as it's labelled by the Ministry of Fisheries and customary fishing which you know I'd hate to be rude but it's like going and getting 600 scallops for a tangi or something like that like in between there is subsistence fishing which is what I try and do feed mathana it's probably what all of you guys try and do as well somewhere in between there needs to be some recognition that there is customary fishing Fishing is a part of our culture, and that is what we need to safeguard over recreational fishing or sport fishing and over industrial fishing and over corporate corruption and over trawlers and over purse seeners. Someone going out and getting a car wife for dinner. Someone going out and getting some skippies for their bait out around the Ottomans. Someone catching a kingfish to share with their whanau. This is our culture, it's our custom. So I want you to have a think about all of that. If some of this has hit home, drop some comments. I know the comments about uh, the IGFA stuff is going to rile a few people up. Probably the intention of the podcast. But put your thoughts down below and let me know what you think. I thank you very much for listening in. Go well, and if you'd like to come and check out my backyard, jump on my website, www.theprovider.co.nz, and I'd love to show you around the Moana, around the Whenua. Come to my home for a kai, share a meal, and hopefully I'll see you again on this podcast soon. Kia ora, Māori ora. Cow.